Hello. Hey there. How do I sound? Different. Does it sound lower or? Or no, maybe not. Uh, talk again. I might just have it turned up too loud. I think more echo probably, right? Yeah, more echo. Yeah. yeah oh, I moved. you moved. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even tell. <laughs> That's crazy. It looks exactly the same, right? It really does. That's yeah, so funny. It, it kind of sucks that it's so much effort to do this. Like I had so much shit mounted on the wall. I had to like unscrew it, move mm. it over, remeasure stuff, re-screw stuff. Like, you put in all that work and then yeah. there's no difference. <laughs> <It's exactly. laughs> you can't tell the difference. Yeah. Uh, what's, why is the audio echoey? You just haven't got it on the walls yet or something? I have no clue. I don't know what I'm missing in this room that was absorbing the echo. I think it's a curtains. I didn't put up the curtains on. Ah, could be it. This side. But yeah, I can't tell. I might need to get, I had a rug before, but I got rid of that a while ago. I might need to get a rug. Hmm. I don't have a rug. Do you have any soundproofing? I have like, my entire walls are covered in acoustic panels. You can see one of them. Oh, I can see back there. Yeah. It's so, I like, my brain refuses to believe that they do anything. (laughs) (laughs) I just can't believe it. Like yeah. I, before this room was awful and now you can't, like if I'm in my office and my door's open, people can't hear me. Like when I'm yelling across the house, trying to yell out from my office, you just can't even hear Like it absorbs all the sound. It's crazy. Do you think, uh, so I have this one wall here. Do you think if I just put some here, it would like make a difference? Uh, I'm sure it would. I mean, every, every little bit would probably make a difference. I don't know. Yeah, the, I might do it then. Like I just went with the shotgun approach and I covered all the walls. I could have gone less if I were smart and knew how sound bounces around. I think you can like strategically place them. It has to do with where you're facing when you're speaking, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Which I'm kind of leaned towards this wall. So I think it would make sense, but I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why it would sound any different. It's exact. Same. It must be the curtains. I like yeah. these big blackout curtains that probably did it. a lot. It doesn't sound bad. Just different. Just a little bit different. Yeah. It's the only sign that you've moved. <laughs> it's crazy. I guess we're not going to stream, right? Well, I can't because my... This is the That's worst day saying, yeah. for all of this. Because I... Uh, so, of course... Okay, listen to this process. <clears throat> I went on my Xfinity because I use Xfinity for internet. I went on the app last week scheduled my move they were like guess what you don't need a technician you can just move your equipment yourself and it's all gonna work and i'm like that's Mm. convenient so then yesterday i did that and i plugged it in and of course nothing worked my account was in some (laughs) weird state that it it got like confused it thought i didn't have service so first i thought it was an issue on their end got that fixed still not working okay we have to send a technician technician comes out today he goes to the box on the right and he's like, there's like no signal coming to this box. And he ends up having to run a cable. Like he like went across the street, pulled out like a giant ladder, climbed up a telephone pole, ran like a new line. Cause apparently the old, my old line was just like busted. I don't know. It just stopped working at some point. Yeah. Ran an old line all the way across my house, then set it up and now it's working, but random websites are like really flaky well they'll work for a while and they'll stop but then the whole internet's having issues today so i can't like debug what the problem is i think that's probably i think that's probably the the transatlantic or whatever it was there was a cable under the sea where was it It was in the middle east or something that was damaged yeah but i I don't know if that one is affecting miami florida (laughs) like what's well i guess i don't know the cascading effects of the internet yeah maybe stuff is getting rerouted or something and it'd be weird to me if you ran it if you ran a new cable and like some websites are a little flaky that seems exactly (laughs) doesn't seem to match the symptoms the Uh, part of the wire that carries twitter is broken (laughs) right Uh, like if you have certain colors on your website they just get mixed up on the cable (laughs) (laughs) yeah so it's just annoying to debug so i think i hope it's not because if if it's an issue on my end like i don't even know how they're going to debug this it's just such a hard thing to figure out i heard i didn't even read the article but i heard discord 
And there were like a few services. Fa- all the Facebook services were out. All maybe. the Facebook ones, yeah. There, there was a lot. If you go to downdetector.com, there was like a spike in like so many unrelated services. Downdetector.com? Uh, I've never heard of such a it's thing. It's actually brilliant. They don't even monitor anything. They just keep track of the number of times people visit their website. And then what? that that's the analytic. Isn't that crazy? Wait, say it again. They don't monitor anything. So it's not like they have like servers pulling all these services. If you search like is Twitter down and you click the link, it takes you to downdetector.com slash Twitter. Uh-huh. And you like plus one their counter. And <laughs> whenever stuff is down, a bunch of people start visiting this site and they're effectively self-reporting, <laughs> hey, I'm having a problem with this site. Yeah. And uh, it's brilliant. <laughs> that is pretty smart. Uh, it doesn't work when you type in Twitter because it's now X. Oh. Twitter outages well. reported in the last 24 hours. Huh. So, yeah, lots of sites showing down on Down Detector. Yeah. So, I can't tell. And it's like, it's really flaky. I think, like, whenever stuff is broken, I'm like hitting Google and Google seems to work. So, I don't think it's a problem on my end. But yeah. It's just, uh, I'm just not going to know. Uh, I feel like we should say that, like, we're waiting for a guest because we don't edit this, the, this part of the podcast, like Chris will edit it for the audio stuff, but YouTube will just get this raw feed. Oh, true. And, yes. We're waiting. Yeah, we're waiting I, for a guest. <laughs> yeah. And I think our energy right now is very like, <laughs> eh. <laughs> just like waiting around, but that wouldn't be clear uh, why we're not really talking much, but we are talking. You know what I mean? I've already said too much. You've basically explained it. Basically. Uh, mm. Did that guest say uh, that they were... Oh, rapping. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> can I just say... Uh, I don't, well, I don't know what I can say, but uh, can I just say, like, imagining this guest giving an interview is really funny to me, like a technical <laughs> interview. <laughs> just like, can you imagine <laughs> that's the person interviewing you? You're like, <laughs> hoping to get a job. <laughs> and, like, you sit down and that's on the other side of Zoom. That'd be really funny to me. <laughs> That'll all make more sense. Well, that's a good teaser. Yeah, good teaser. (laughs) We're not even on Twitch. I don't know why I'm trying to be like coy with who it is. Uh, I guess it'll just be more fun. I have a great intro for this episode. Oh, okay. Yeah. I finally have one. We never have one. Oh, you're not going to like it, but it's going to be good. You're going to say a thing that you think Chris will use at the beginning. Is that what you mean? Like that kind of intro? Yeah, I think so. Oh, nice. Look at you. I'm going to put it up there. It involves a, a, a sort of insult to you. Oh, ouch. Okay. Well. <laughs> not really. An, it's not an insult. It's an accurate observation. An accurate observation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so nervous. <laughs> you have time. Like you don't have to go, right? If he takes a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm not in a hurry. Uh, uh, I'm. Uh, I'm like still in the process of moving. I've been doing like a little bit every day. Like, how long is this going to stretch out? How long do you have to get stuff out of the other house? Uh, no one is, no one's taken the other house yet. Like, I actually showed someone around it today. Uh, huh. no one's, just, no one's pulled the trigger. So, we're going to try to get it done by today or tomorrow. We did like one big push Sunday and Monday, and today Man, Tuesday. Moving. Yeah, moving sucks. At least I guess it's next door, so you didn't have to have a truck and do the whole loading the truck thing and. Yeah, that part sucks. And like, so if we you did... put stuff in a moving van, it will get destroyed. I don't know if you oh, ever yeah. like. We yeah. moved from New York to Miami. Oh, in a truck, yeah. Like, okay, everything gets destroyed. Like, they all just fight each other. All your <laughs> things just go at each other, and they destroy each other. I moved the most delicate LG OLED TV. It is like it is so okay. You know how they were like they kept making TVs thinner and thinner. They've yeah, gotten yeah. too thin now. Where like I can barely <laughs> move. Like whenever I move it, it's so it's such like a scary process because it it just like bends and like it's yeah. it's too thin. Like that made it completely fine. But they put so much work in like box. They like reboxed it. They wrapped it a million times. They put it in the box and they wrapped the box a bunch and they put blankets all around it. So that Ooh. one made it easily. Some of our clothes got a little messed up. Uh, you know what's crazy about those moves? So those long distance moves from New York to Miami, they show up in a truck. It's a normal city truck. And then they yeah. let everything in. And you're like, okay, I guess they're on their way to Miami now. 
they're not. <laughs> they go to a warehouse, then they unload everything, what? and then they wait a couple of days or maybe like a week to to like accrue a bunch of things. Then they show up in a semi in like a bigger like those bigger uh-huh. bigger trucks like the tractor trailer trucks. Yeah, semi truck uh, is what you're semi truck. Yeah, I think. yeah. Uh, then they load it back in. Then they drive it all the way down, unload it into another warehouse. Then get a city truck, load it onto the city truck, what? then drive it to your so house. So they wait until multiple people are moving to the same place, <clears throat> and then they like transport all at once. Yeah, they have it all scheduled because like they'll like pick up, you know, three or four people. They'll do like three or four days of city pickups, then they'll do like one big move. But yeah. the thing that sucks is your stuff is getting loaded, unloaded like four times in that process, oh, and man. of course, it's I'm not going to get damaged. Yeah, yeah. So in that move, I would say overall we came out not bad. Like uh, our colds were actually fine. Just a box that was in them like got crushed, uh, mm-hmm. but the colds were fine. Plates, we lost a bunch of plates, and I think that was uh, it. I think everything else was intact. Wow. Uh, a little bit of our couch, like there was like a like a stand, like the bottom portion that the couch sits on. Like one of the stands in the middle broke, but like you can't really see that anyway. So yeah, overall not bad. Yeah, I've I've had movers move me, and things went pretty well. And then I moved myself once. Things did not go as well. I am not as good at packing as professional movers, it turns out. Professional movers are so impressive. Yeah, they really are. They're so good. They move. They move fast too. Yeah, the uh, the so we had two guys come and help us yesterday morning because we had a few heavy items. We're like, we're gonna have someone come help us. And I think movers are always like one or two, one of two stereotypes. And I've only ever had the first stereotype up until yesterday. The first stereotype is like just the stockiest people you've ever seen. Like they're like squares and, (laughs) and like they can just lift anything. Uh, And they don't like look like you would never see them on the street and be like, oh, that person's like really strong. It's just, they are yeah, like super dense. Yep. The two guys that showed up yesterday, both of them were like six foot four, super lean, and they looked like NBA players. It was what? like they both looked super athletic. Yeah. And they just were like like they just like lifted everything. And just when you have that much, I guess, leverage, they're both super lanky, <laughs> like super long arms, super long legs, and they were just like Huh. Yeah. They made quick work of most of the things. And they were like, that was really easy. And I was like, that did not look easy, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> we had um we have one of those egg barbecue things. Oh yeah, big green egg. My dad's. Super I don't have the green. One. I have a I have a Kamado Joe, which is a red Wait, one. What? Is that better than the big green egg? I think so, but you know, it's like what what really is the difference? I don't who, know. Who knew there were two companies that make egg shaped grills? <laughs> I learned something I, new today. So when I bought this Kamado Joe grill, that's what's called Kamado Joe. The reason it's called that is because. Uh, this type of grill originates in Japan. It's called a Kamado grill. Mm-hmm. And obviously the American version of it, Kamado Joe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I remember I was like looking up stuff and there's like all these YouTube videos made by them. And there's like a huge community of people like making, making YouTube videos for it. And like a they're big successful company. I'm like, man, it must be so fun to work at a company like this. Like you, you all you do is make these barbecues everyone loves your product like it's just good times like it's genuinely everyone's super happy to buy your stuff and you just go in every day and you like you make these egg shaped ceramic grills and <laughs> and that's 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 like your life and your passion and what you think about and I'm like that's man that sounds really huh. fun you don't think you'd get bored like i can't imagine that there's that much to think about i mean maybe maybe okay. they like improve their manufacturing over time so there's like I will say the thing that they go crazy. Okay, so the grill itself, if you buy like the mid-size one that you probably get, it's around like twelve hundred dollars. Uh, if you go crazy with accessories, you can buy like two thousand or three thousand dollars worth of accessories on top because Whoa. they have found a way to make this thing do literally anything. So if you want to like cook pizza in it, there's like a pizza oven attachment. Um, uh. There's a there's an airflow vent at the bottom, and it's what you used to control how much oxygen it's getting to control the temperature. They built like this four hundred dollar fan that you like connect into it, and it's like a smart fan. It connects to your phone, and it keeps track of the temperature inside <laughs> of the thing, and it like controls how much oxygen is going in. So it's like precisely yeah. the right temperature at all times. So it's like, yeah. So they go crazy coming up with 
these like additional so, so things. So it's not just making the the round ceramic grill. Like that would get boring, I would think. But if you keep coming up with new products, I guess that's exciting. Yeah, I, I think the mission is just what's funny. It's like your ultimate mission is just so people make good food and are happy. You know, it's like so <laughs> simple yeah. and straightforward, and you know, no one can really argue with it. <laughs> Uh, I've never considered uh, life in a job like that or any other job, really. I guess. Do you ever? Yeah. Do you ever think about like, like I wish I'd gone into this instead of what I do. Like a different industry, or like my like, yeah, like craft a completely is different. different profession, just like a completely different job, not programming. Yeah, uh, I do, but then I'm like, I just, I have such a hard time imagining it because I can't imagine myself yeah. being good at anything else. So, in my, when I try to imagine it, I just imagine myself sucking at some random thing, and I'm like, that doesn't sound fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just read something yesterday, or no, I heard it on a podcast. I think uh, the guy Cal Newport wrote Deep Work. Uh, he was on the Rich Roll podcast, and he was talking about. I think that's where I read it. Or heard it. Maybe not. Maybe this is a completely separate thought. But it was about like passion and how you don't like you don't like pursue your passion when you're looking for your career. It's like you develop a passion when you mm -hmm. gain expertise in a thing. I don't know, maybe that's oh, common yeah. knowledge, but kinda hit me as like, huh. I guess I wasn't passionate about programming when I started programming. I didn't know anything about it. But then eventually you become really passionate the more you do it and the more you like it and the more you get good at it and all that. Yeah interesting yeah once you're good at something it's just addictive because like there's no better feeling yeah. than feeling like you know what you're doing so yeah i'm also addicted to things i'm terrible at though like jujitsu so i don't <laughs> know what that's about well, that's if good. i think i'm gonna be good someday and that's why i'm hooked i don't know that's good though that's like what people struggle with right people have a hard time going mm. back to feeling like they're a beginner so if you don't have that it's kind of like a superpower yeah have you ever played golf no but i keep finding golf balls all around my new house because i think the people <laughs> that lived it, yeah, no, I know for sure the, the three. Wait, do you remember me telling you that the, I like live next door to these three frat guys? Oh yeah, is this their house? And now I live in their house. Now I live oh. in their house. Yeah, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. yeah. And, and then now that I see the backyard, I'm like, oh, no wonder they were just always throwing parties because this is like <laughs> the perfect party backyard, especially if I've you're seen like a picture. Yeah, well, yeah, especially nice. if you're like that age. Like, probably very few people have access to. Like a place like that, um, yeah. but yeah, I, I would always see them with golf bags in the mornings, and I think they were just like hitting golf balls around in the backyard, like, mm. you know, on the fake grass. Well, golf is a uh, a sport that's notoriously hard to master, and you basically you go play golf, and you're terrible, and you're chasing balls all over, you're digging through the woods looking for your ball. It's just like an awful time, but then you hit like one good shot every time you go. And that keeps you coming back. You think about that shot. That's all you think about after that round of golf. It's like, man, I hit that ball well. And then you come back for the next round and it's misery again. You just, you're terrible. Everything's going poorly. You hit him in the lake. You hit him all over. Then you get that one shot. And it's like a different club this time. You're like, I actually hit a four iron today. That was amazing. <laughs> so it's, it's an interesting sport in that it's just pain all the time. But then those little glimmers of hope keep you hooked. You get really addicted. I get really addicted. I get addicted to everything. Whatever. Well, it's funny because the way you describe that, I feel like certain like games or like mobile games or like there's things that are like engineered to have that exact pattern where it's like mm. mostly frustration, but they like feed you one little mm -hmm. thing that feels like progress yeah. at, at the right cadence. And then it's like, yeah. it's a recipe for addiction. Isn't it crazy yeah. that, that like you read these articles about companies, social media companies and all these companies that are like figuring out how to like release the right amount of dopamine in your brain at the right time. Like all this like engineering of addiction, like who are the people doing it though? Cause like I've worked at tech companies, I guess. And like, I'm trying to think who is the person, is it the data scientist and do they realize that's what they're doing? Or are they just like given a bunch of like data sets and they're like, Hey, figure out how to make this number go up. Or does somebody know, like I'm literally like engineering people's brains to be addicted to this thing. Is there a person at the company that knows that? I think there's, it's funny because my first reaction was, I don't think, I think yes, but I think most people aren't competent enough to think that way. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's kind of what comes to mind. Cause like when you're talking about this, I thought about Nikita beer and mm -hmm. like, he definitely like really thinks about this stuff oh, and yeah. is super aware of exactly the dynamics. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I remember this thing I saw this, you see his interaction with him and Paul Graham yesterday. 
No. On Twitter? Telegram posted a chart, okay, a growth chart. Had mm-hmm. no labels, didn't say what app it was. It was, and he commented, this is an interesting app because uh, they get a big spike because this app relates to people's New Year's resolutions, but the app works. So then like they actually retain all those people. Like, so every year they'll get a spike and they actually do retain them. And I was like, okay, that was interesting. Then Nikita B replies going, is this a language learning app? And then Paul Graham was like, yeah. And then he like linked the company. <laughs> the guy was like, I'm finally saying publicly. He literally just looked at a chart, like an unbelievable the chart, chart of growth was. and was like, this has to be a language learning app. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that guy, he, he's the, I guess the world expert in like, at least with phones, how to Consumer get people addicted product. to something. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah. And how to yeah, make it yeah. something people want to share and all those things. He, yeah, he thinks about this stuff all the time, doesn't he? But I don't think of him as like evil. I don't know. The person I'm describing like at the evil big company is like, I'm going to make them spend more time on their phone. And I don't think of him that way. I think the smarter you are, the easier it is to create a story that doesn't sound so evil to yourself. Mm. So i don't think anyone's out there like value. i love being evil <laughs> <laughs> no, right. i'm sure yeah, they yeah, like I wrap it in like yourself. all kinds of all kinds of whatever and you're not evil it's not like you have to convince yourself you're not evil like you're not it's just like i don't know where, where did i just hear about uh did i watch something did i watch a documentary or something i don't know i just i feel like this is top of mind with like how much time we spend on our phones, how they're destroying all these social constructs and most of modern society and we're all addicted and yada, yada, yada. I mean, it's the same stuff like we all know, but we keep doing it. Do you just like, do you think it's fine and it'll all just like go away and like, we'll figure it out how to adapt and evolve with these things. (laughs) I think I can speak in Nikita. He tweeted something the other day that where he was like, I stare at my phone all day because it's so damn interesting. (laughs) (laughs) It was something like that. Let me find the exact tweet. And it's like, in a lot of ways, it can be that simple. Like, maybe it is just one of the most genuinely interesting things that's Mm -hmm. happening in the world. Not saying it's the only interesting thing, but... Yeah. uh, Hang on, let me see. Maybe we wouldn't be so glued to our phones if they weren't the most interesting thing in the world. (laughs) I mean, his perspective would be that, right? Because, uh, I mean, he makes these apps that do really well. I, I know what it was. It was on uh, the Bill Simmons podcast. He had somebody on. I can't remember. And they talked about the future of everything, which I thought was funny because that's kind of what our podcast is labeled as. But we only talk about programming and stupid stuff. I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, they, they, he, this guy was like a research scientist or something. I don't know. Or no, he writes for Variety. I don't know. He's a writer. Wait, somebody. Bill Simmons' podcast covers like random shit like that? Oh, yeah. Lots of pop culture oh, stuff. Oh, okay. Our guest is here. Look at that. <laughs> hey. Oh, we, can't, we hear can't hear you. Hear. It sounds really cool, but it looks uh, really cool. But... Maybe he was just oh, bowing. Oh, we can hear you. How about he was now? Just you bowing now? at us. Yeah, yeah. We got you. Oh, there you yeah, go. I didn't say shit. Oh. Yeah, he was just looking at us <laughs> like this. <laughs> A little right. what's, what's going on, fellas? I'm good. How much? How are I guess you we doing? should introduce him. I, Dax, did you say you were gonna? You had an intro oh, or something? I have, I have a great, I have a great intro for this episode. Are you guys ready? Mm-hmm. All right. This is gonna be a really special episode because, like always, we have Adam, who is my whitest white friend, and we have <laughs> Ken, who is my least white white friend. <laughs> this is gonna be <laughs> worlds colliding on this episode. That was good. That was a good one. <laughs> You really are so fucking white. It's unbelievable. (laughs) (laughs) You can't blame him. You know, he's he's literally left, never left Missouri. I've I've left. No, you went to Atlanta. You went to Atlanta one time. I hung out with Ken somewhere. Atlanta. Did you actually go? Were you there? Me? No, no, no. 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 Uh, I was trying to figure out if he, I don't think you. you, Yeah, yeah, I went. To Rinder? Wait, what? Oh, no, no, no I no. didn't go to everything. Oh, yeah, okay, I didn't okay, go to okay, all okay, the yeah. extracurricular activities. Okay. <laughs> Even if you did, I wouldn't have remembered it. Yeah. <laughs> that was um, clarifying. I was totally out of control. It was fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone says that about, about Render. It gets bigger every year. That's what she said. <laughs> about oh, my <man>. stomach. 
<laughs> uh, we're not recording I now. Was... I'm wasting this gold right now. No, no, no. no we are recording. Hundred percent. Oh, we we, we record oh, right yeah. away. No, oh, we, this we, is we, live. We've wasted enough. Yeah. That. Okay. Uh, so I have a funny story. I don't think I ever told you this, Ken. But a few years ago, when I first found your Twitter, mm -hmm. I was like, "Oh, this guy is hilarious." And then I was, uh, I went to Liz. And I was like, look at this guy. He's an engineer, but like, he's so funny and so different from what you'd expect. And she looks at your profile and she like got kind of upset. She was like, are you guys just <laughs> laughing at him? Cause he's Latin. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he's not, but you know, I totally get why she thought that you definitely hundred percent give off. That's that so vibe. fucking funny. <laughs> you, you know, what's you know, here's the funny thing. So I get that a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but what also happens a lot is like, um, anywhere I go internationally, mm -hmm. especially in Europe, right? It doesn't matter like what, like, you know, like you think like of like a Swede or you, it's like this like tall fucking blonde guy or something, right? You think like, oh, well, you know, Italian, right? They get this little, you know, the mustache and all that shit. Um, but no matter, no matter what country you're in, there's always that like phenotype of dude that is like the bald, like shouldery fuck. <laughs> Yeah. Right. So inevitably, so inevitably, whenever I'm over there, like they'll try to talk to me in the language because they think that I'm from there. Just because, yeah. like, there's that fucking guy everywhere. <laughs> you're right. Yeah. Uh, if you're in Turkey, totally see. It. If you're in Greece, totally see it. Like, yeah, you you kind of work anywhere. Right. I'm like, I'm like, I don't fucking speak Polish. <laughs> I'm like, I thought I was fucking. You know, like, yeah. Um, it's unbelievable. I have this I have the same thing everywhere else in the world. Like if I go to, if I'm anywhere like Latin, they think I'm like Dominican. If I'm in uh, Asia, I think I'm like from the Middle East, North African. Mm. So I definitely, I definitely I blend it. in as well. Uh, what about you, Adam? Do people mistake you for? They mostly <laughs> think I'm white. Yeah, they mostly think I'm Caucasian. <laughs> That's what I get a lot. And it's, That's fair. And it's accurate. Yeah. 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 Dude, what is, uh, what is this mic cover you have on there? On mine? Yeah. It's white, you know? That's it's hilarious. My, it's my brand. <laughs> did, you, did you order uh, that, like, third party? <laughs> yeah, no, it's like a place in the UK that sells these colored... Of course, in the UK. Not colored. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Literally, um, every single SM7B owner in the world, it looks like this. And then, of yeah, course, yours the mine is, is the one, you get the white, the one. one white one. Yeah. yeah. Mine's all, makes like, me look less white. There's, like, fucking lip scan on it from, like... Rapping yeah, I noticed that the other day. I noticed that <laughs> mine's getting kind of gross, and the white shows it really bad. It's like I guess I touch it. Mine just covered in like mm -hmm. lint and dog hair and all kinds of bullshit. I don't even it know. Happens. Can you clean this? Yeah. Do you uh, clean it? No, I don't. Can know. you clean it? I don't know. You guys just replace it. It's really hard to clean. You just foam. replace it. Just be a consumer, Dax. Just it's order like, a new it's one. like the um, like did you see where they they uh they clean like the stadium seats? Just like burn no, off the first light. You never saw that? What? No. Oh, dude. So like, like imagine like some like, like minor league baseball stadium, right? That's been there for like thirty years, and the seats, you know, like plastic looks real shitty, like subway seat kind of shit, right? Yeah. Like an old playground swing. There's this dude, and he goes around, and you take like a blow torch, like a roofing torch, and you go, whoosh, <laughs> and it's like brand new looking. Wow. <laughs> I think Wait, like, does it burn off it, a it, like, layer? It melts back the first layer or some shit. But like, dude, like you want to talk about like a satisfying video, right? Like uh, you see these videos that are like you, you watch it and you're like, Phew. right? Like, yeah. You know, have, you ever, have you ever like power washed and you're like, Ooh, you oh watch, yeah, like, dude, the power, power washing videos. Yeah. yeah. But like this shit, making a seat new again. Oh, <laughs> oh. I watched Did it. You... I'm like, oh, this is just. <laughs> Did you uh, <laughs> did you see the thing where the person was cleaning the? I think it was like a bus seat. That was fucked up. So you know how like bus seats are like fabric, but they're always like some crazy ass pattern. Yeah, the crazy mm -hmm. pattern is there because they're fucking disgusting. Like he was pulling out uh, like a bucket of dirt out of the bus seat. Oh and man, that's gross. Not good. He, like fall asleep on that with like, like fucking mouth and eyes on it and shit. Like oh uh, yeah, yeah. So, no, really. If you're on public, don't sit down. Is what I've learned. That's why I don't I've seen go in public. Videos on Just... buses that show all these things happening, and I don't like it. <laughs> I mean, I've never really Acts. taken a bus. 
I mean, I took in New York sometimes. throwing up, shitting, pissing. Have you ever been back? Have you ever been in like the back of an Uber where you like could tell that like you know there was some partying going on the evening prior? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. We I think we've all been there. I'm like, did somebody puke in this fucking car? Ugh. <laughs> I've definitely puked out of a lot of Ubers. I feel like I've always made it to like pull the window open or pull the door open. There's like, there's like a sweaty looking hair tie. In the floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I said no, I like, saw you were saying the the weather was good by you. You were doing some outside stuff again. Well, the the uh, the weekend was lovely. It was unbelievable. It was like sixty five mm-hmm. degrees. I mean, it's been like like twenty two degrees. So when it's like yeah. sixty five degrees and like it's like that like nourishing sun. Mm. You know, like, like I don't know, this time of year, like, the sun gets brighter. Like, it wasn't as bright prior. Mm. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. And, like, now it's just, like, bright as shit. And, like, you can, like, sit there and it's, like, 65 degrees out, but it feels like 75 because you're getting kind of toasted if you're in direct sunlight. So, yeah. when that happens, you know, like, if it was in the middle of summer, it was 65 degrees, I'd be like, oh, give me a hoodie. But, like, now it's 65 <laughs> degrees. Like, oh, man. I was like, I'm going to go out here shirtless and make hamburgers. And <laughs> That is a thing, though. Like, I remember, because when, when I lived in the Northeast, uh, when it would get a little cold in, like, September, I would be, like, freezing my ass off and i wear a sweater. Same temperature in March, I'm, like, in shorts without a shirt on, and it feels fucking amazing. Yeah, you're like, fuck, cowabunga. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kim, do you have a, an egg-shaped grill? No, I actually don't. And I actually have, like, a, a portfolio of grills. If you go mm-hmm. out of my deck right now, there's there's three or four grills in a row. You have like the wow. pellet smoker, the the gas Weber, the flat top Blackstone. I think there's a, a yeah. I have like a, a, a like a charcoal. It's a funny grill. It's like a little charcoal grill, like a apparently some kind of like Japanese kebab grill or some shit. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's it's it, it's made by Supreme. Or at least in collaboration with Supreme. Yeah. <laughs> I was showing you, I saw I'm like, uh, you know who got it? Eric Lewis. Eric Lewis was like, I just got the Supreme grill. And I'm like, I'm like, I must have it. <laughs> I went on like StockX and got this Supreme Stop, grill. You got it on StockX? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I even bought it aftermarket. <laughs> what is StockX? Uh, I've never heard of StockX. It's like if there's like popular sneakers that like sold out and you want to buy them for double the price, you go on StockX. Ah, uh, okay. you don't get the initial yeah. drop, yeah. Okay, yeah. They, they were a hot startup for a while. I know a few people that that work there. I think they're in New York, maybe. I think so. Uh, which one of your grills do you use the most? What's your go-to? <sighs> That's hard to say. Probably the Weber right now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But it's 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 different things, right? Like if I'm gonna make smash burgers, I'll do it on the um, the flat top. A lot of breakfast on the on the flat top. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that I do hilariously on the flat top is hibachi. Oh, like, yeah. full <laughs> hibachi. Do, do you do all the tricks? So like, so I got the volcano. it. Like I got it. And, like I was like, oh, this is like this is like a hibachi thing. So I have to do hibachi. So I did like private hibachi with like my immediate family, um, and then my wife's sister found out about this and said that oh, you like you have to cook hibachi for everybody. It's like the middle of summer. <laughs> like you got to. So they go and they get me like the hibachi hat. Like oh the, wow! The headband, <laughs> like the the whole well, the whole setup. Even like the little dude who pisses out the the onion volcano. Yeah. You know, like the dude who presses yeah, it and yeah, the shorts yeah. come down. So like I have I have I have all the paraphernalia. Um, and yeah, like if you if you were there to witness it, it was unbelievable because like made like like canonical hibachi. But, like, was shit-faced the entire time. <laughs> like, I think I drank, like, two or three bottles of sake while cooking it. <laughs> and I had, like, traditional Japanese music playing way, way too loud on the outdoor speakers. It was, like, a real... <laughs> this was a real oh, event. Yeah. It was pretty funny. I haven't... I don't think I've met anyone that can drink like you. Because the last time we hung out... So Ken showed up, and he already drank, like six old fashions or something crazy uh i couldn't even tell that you were drunk and then he had like three or four more <laughs> again at the place and i was like i think if i had three or four i'd be like knocked out a lot of practice i'm like all right i'm gonna go hit the hotel gym we'll see you later <laughs> <laughs> and you wake up early too right i don't know yeah. yeah 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 I, I think today was five 
Yeah. Do you go uh, to bed early? Something. Like what? What is? I, I don't imagine it, you go to bed early. It, it depends, right? Like, it, it, usually it's like an eleven thirty type thing, but it can go as far five, as three. Huh? It can go as early as ten. And you still get up early when you stay up late. Yeah. Oh, oh that's the man. that's the funniest part, is that no matter how late I go to bed, I still wake up at the same time. Yeah, wow. I know that feeling. Yeah, so I can like be out till three and like wake up at five, and I'm like, well, fuck, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Still drunk. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll, like, wake up, and, like, like vape a little, like go like drink like hotel faucet water. I'm like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like when you've drank all the water bottles in the hotel room, and it's the next morning, and like mm-hmm. they haven't replenished the water bottles. Dude, they never so give you enough. Like cup and faucet water in your mouth, yeah. like. <laughs> you're like <sighs> This is like a, such a problem in hotels. Like, I feel like I'm always like, you think a hotel gives you like figures of the water situation for you, but they never do. They're always I just Instacart. No. I Instacart big packages of water to the hotel. Not, yeah, is that not you a would. thing people do? I always yeah. have like. Tons <laughs> I'm not, of I'm not surprised <laughs> that you said that, but that has literally never crossed my mind in my whole life. I mean, I travel like three times a year, so I'm not gonna like not have water. When I'm it really away. depends on the hotel. Like there's, there's like this really nice hotel in Chicago that I used to stay in, where mm-hmm. like every night before bed they would put on like opera on this Bose thing. So like you walk in and like opera is playing and in your room. Yeah, yeah. And there's like they had like branded like milk cartons of water that were really like, really cute. Huh. Nice. And like they'd have like a water for you and like the slippers like on like a folded towel on the ground. Right. And it's the funniest thing because I would slay the water and like I can't tell you how many times I've walked in like shit face and then woke up in the morning and the opera is still playing. I never turn I don't have the wherewithal to turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wake up in the morning, it's like <laughs> that. And like, you know when you walk in a hotel room and it's like the introductory fucking like it's like ding 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 it's like welcome mr wheeler right and like, yeah. like, i never TV, shut the yeah. shit off i never i don't i don't really watch tv so it like never i, I, never, I just fall asleep and i wake up and that shit's still going i'm like god it's loud it's the oh, demo loop. that's funny <laughs> yeah yeah that, that's a weird thing like i like i know some people that will go and they'll watch tv but i don't i just like fuck around on my phone Oh yeah, I mean, does anyone even use a TV these days in the hotel? Like, what's some people the point? do. Some people watch the TV. Do people still uh, buy porn on the t- on TV? Like that one, I never understood. Like, is that still a thing people do? It's still a thing that you can do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I stayed at a hotel the other day, or like a couple months ago, and that was like so prominently featured as a feature of this TV, and I was like, who is still doing this in like 2024? It's expensive. It's like twenty something it bucks. It is expensive. I did it once in Atlantic City, yeah. um, and it was more of like a joke thing. Yeah. Because I was like, "There, my worth wife." It? Like, I wouldn't. No, no. She was like, "These guys can turn it off." <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's not. It's not like a like a solo thing. Like, how do you not have access to this on your yeah. phone? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't. It just doesn't make any and sense. Like, even, even if you. Even, yeah, it's it's just like the wrong. It's like a commercial category, you know. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Not for yeah. Me. Even if you want to pay, the selection's gonna be better on your phone. So, I don't get it. Infinitely better. Uh, there's and the, there's some like hotels here. I guess more motels. It's still like advertised that as like a feature of the hotel, like on their front signs. They're what? like motel yeah, that adult on the front films sign. exclamation point. Yeah, dude. It's, I mean, it is Miami, so. A little different. Mm. <laughs> Speaking of, when are you moving here? I don't know. I'd like to. Um, you know, that's that's largely rates dependent. Yeah, I know. We're all trapped right now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Rates and I price. just. You know, I'm like, fuck, dude. Am I gonna have to live in this place? I mean, there's worse places to live, but am I gonna be like stuck in New Jersey for the rest of my life? I've lived in a five mile radius for 38 years so far, so it's not like, <laughs> not like yeah, devastating, mean. but yeah, Adam's done the same thing, right? Yeah. I mean, well, we moved like two you, hours away. You I've been know, Adam's, lived, life. Adam's lived in Florida for a year. Hmm. Oh, I did. I lived in Naples. Yeah. How'd that go? 
Uh, it was good. I mean, Naples, Naples is different than Miami. I don't know if you're aware. But <laughs> no, I know. Very old people, <laughs> which is our speed. <laughs> <laughs> we brought the Ozarks to Florida. Yeah. It was nice. I remember I was asking I, you when you told me about the Ozarks. I was like, "Oh man, that's like that must be amazing." You like go out on like boats and go fishing and shit. And you're like, and you and it's the funniest fucking thing. You go, you go, no, I'm a bit of an indoorsman. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dude, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> I've never gone hunting. Like all of my friends growing up, like got out of school to go deer hunting. I've literally never, never been in the woods and hunted an animal. And I live in like the capital of it in the world. Oh, it's like the wow. best. I had deer stew for lunch. I saw Today? you made that venison stew for the week. That looked good. Yep. Yeah, it was tasty. Yeah. Did you kill the deer or did you like yeah. buy it at the store? Yeah. No, no. Wow. No. Just like went out in the woods in New Jersey and shot it? That's right. New Jersey's got a lot of deer. Wow. Yeah. Really? It's an overpopulation of, of deer. Yeah, it's a problem. Huh. Doing so is actually like a, a conservationist a service. Serv yeah. 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 You, they encourage you, it. They're managing the habitat capacity. I just don't imagine woods. Like, are you close to New York or not so much? Did he leave? I think Dax just got, he might have, he's tethered, so he might have just yeah. lost the internet. Yeah, so um, here's the thing about New Jersey and a lot of these places, right, is that um, along the edge, right, like the, the ocean, yeah. right, it's all, it's very built up, right? Yeah. But, like, you go, like, one or two towns back, and it's, just, like, extremely wooded. So okay. there's actually a lot of, like... Like woods. The... Yeah, I guess I've never been to any part of New Jersey that's not connected to New York City. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Like, you have North Jersey, right? And that goes actually in a little bit farther. But down by me, I mean, you go like one or two towns back, and you are just in the woods. Mm. Just pure yeah. woods. I mean, it's it's called the Garden State, and the place where I'm from is, uh, it's like almost rural. Like, it's, it's built up a little bit now, because like a bunch of suburbs got put in there, but... If you're driving around, along the road, like you think you're in like a rural, rural area. So New Jersey is small, but it's actually pretty beautiful in some parts, minus the parts that are like the spewing out of New York. <laughs> like everything else is pretty nice. <laughs> it's interesting because there's a lot of variety in such a small space. Mm -hmm. You know, like like down like where I grew up, it's like it's like Laguna Beach. Everyone's like surfing and blah, bro, blah, right? And then like. <laughs> You go up north, and it's it's a funny thing that happens because, like, most cities are contained by their state, whereas New York City is, like, at the absolute dick tip of New York State. And, like, the the sprawl, like, when you would, like, look at, like, like greater Atlanta, right? Like, you know, you have, mm -hmm. like, all these townships that are, like, still georgia and they're like greater like greater new york is is like mostly new jersey and like connecticut and then like you get like like westchester and stuff like that but it's funny to me that like everybody in new york is like fucking new jersey you're not from new york right and, like, <laughs> like bro like literally half of the new york metropolitan area is in fucking new jersey including the statue of liberty you're from fucking like, ohio you fucking moved here two years ago shut the fuck up like <laughs> It's unbelievable. Uh, yeah, that's very accurate. That's a, that's definitely the vibe. I mean, uh, yeah, I, Ken described it once as uh, Midwesterners LARPing, like half it's, New yeah. York. It's <laughs> super yeah. accurate. It's crazy accurate. It's like a checklist item. Like, they got to live in New York for two years before they leave. And they go there. And then, yeah, it's like you see that all the time. They go there and buy some expensive boots, start putting down New Jersey. <laughs> it's, un it's unbelievable. <laughs> New Jersey is great. I feel like more people should consider it. It has a bad rep. It's like the butt of every joke. But honestly, like, it's some pretty good spots. It's a little expensive. And yeah, a tad it over-legislated, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, however, like, there is a lot going on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like I feel this, like that was code for something, but I didn't get it. No, no, it's not code for anything. Oh, okay. You know, there's like there's like a variety of things to do. There's all kinds of shit going wow. on, and like, okay, yeah, a lot of different. You know, like if you go like northwest, it's like woods and mountains and shit. And if you go like all the way down south, it's like the weirdest shit. You find like. Yeah. <laughs> Are you I think I've been to South barons? Jersey like twice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That, that gets really, really interesting. There's, like, dudes, like, 
like NASCAR jackets on, and you're like, "What the fuck is going?" Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just wild. It's a it's a really diverse. I mean, the people too, super diverse. Like, you'll run into every kind of person, which means there's like every kind of food also. Yeah. Which is, uh, I took that for granted. Like, whenever. Whenever I meet people from anywhere else, like they just don't know about certain kinds of food. Like my wife didn't have Indian food until she was like twenty four or something. It's like wild oh, to me. Indian's so good. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I can't believe you have Indian food in by you, Adam, right? You oh, said there's a I place. Wore, yeah, we wear shoes too. I don't know if you knew. In the You're not supposed to wear shoes in an Indian roads, place. Paved roads. You're not supposed <laughs> to wear shoes in an Indian place. No, I'm just, I'm just I don't yeah, but you know what? I don't think you know how hard like Indian food in Edison, New Jersey goes. <laughs> it's like, um, it's like getting pizza. It's like, it's kind of like getting pizza in the rest of the country. Yeah. Right. Like if yeah. you get like pizza outside and you outside of the Northeast and you know, okay, Chicago, I hear you, but, um, <laughs> you know, you get like, uh, outside of there, right. Like the pizza is like, you know, I'm sure a pizza is delicious and it's good, but it's not the same. Um, if you're out in like, like Edison, there's like levels to this shit. Jersey City, too, yeah. right? Like it's not yeah, just, yeah. it's not just like the one kind of Indian or the one good grade of Indian with the the red and green sauce, right? There's like a variety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't really eat I don't really eat Indian food here in the Ozarks. I guess it's just when I travel, and we make some stuff, but it's not. Yeah, I'm sure it's not what Dax could make. <laughs> I can't make shit. Make no, I, <laughs> no, no, no. I can't make shit. My mom though. My mom is an amazing cook. Uh, I think you've talked about it before. It sounds so good. Yeah. So it's funny let me, let me that Ken brought up. Edison. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she would she would not mind dropping some shit off, I'm sure. Uh, I was just trying to go over there, but... Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> coordinating this very specifically. <laughs> uh, yeah, Adam, you don't understand. When Ken says Edison, New Jersey, like... If you go there, you will think you're in India. So I moved uh, to New Jersey, like, I guess it was like 30 or 25 years ago, something like that. And it was like kind of Indian back then. But now it's just like, it's just every person you see is Indian. Every business is like an Indian business. Like it is insane. It's and like, it's like spreading like, from like there. like street signs, like Gandhi Street. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> and that happened so quick. It was like the last uh. three decades, I would say. It's, and then uh, there's like specialty supermarkets where you can get shit that you like can't get. You know, like I know there's yeah. like the there's the Asian supermarket and you can get like durians there and shit. Like, oh yeah. Mm. Those are the yeah. smelly ones, right? Oh yeah, all kinds of like wild import shit. Yeah. Yeah. The, Forbidden the ingredients. T- <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what was a trip was the the Bats Temple. Did you see when I posted oh, about yeah. that? I saw it. I don't know if you saw I don't, it. I don't know what you're talking about now. Right, so like oh. apparently like one of the largest Hindu temples it, like I don't know, like second or third largest in the world or something they built, not even in that part of New Jersey in like, <laughs> in like the woods part of New York. Like I was out at like, there, there's like this like sculpture garden, right? Where you can go to this like French restaurant and get all tipsy off champagne and then walk around like a sculpture garden. And it's fucking sick. So we do that from time to time. And, um, we're like leaving and we're like kind of shit face. Right. And, um, I mean, not like shit face, but we're buzzy. And my wife's like, uh, Oh, do you want to, uh, that, uh, that, that temple's by here. You want to go check that out? Because like you, you hear, like, they imp- imported, like, fucking, like, a billion dollars worth, like, Carrera marble to build it and shit, right? Really, whatever. So, like, we were like, yeah, check it out. And um, we, like, pull up, and it's, like, the craziest shit you've ever seen in your entire life. The craziest yeah. shit. Yeah. It's insane. And I was There's like, I, I, don't know I, how this, I don't know how this is going to go, right? Like, I'm going to walk in here, and, like, you know, I, I don't know. But I walked up, and they were, like, mad cool, right? They're like, they're like, hey, check this shit out. <laughs> they're like it's Verbatim. fucking sick right and i'm like it is fucking sick like so tight he's like well have fun if you need anything let me know like yeah. i don't even think he worked there yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what i like about indian people honestly i think there's like a section of every race that's like this where they like come up to you and they're like i don't care what you look like like you don't care what I look like. Just show me how this shit works. Like show me what's going on. That's like what Indian people are like, and it's and it's great. Yeah, it was it was nuts. I had the the meta glasses on, so like I just walked through there and I was like <laughs> taking pictures of shit. And like, it, dude, it's yeah. like a movie. It's like crazy. It's like like you know how you go to like Disney and like they like recreate like Paris, 
and like you yeah. walk through there and you're like oh wow right like like it's like that but it's like real not like made out of styrofoam yeah <laughs> like, what yeah, the yeah. Fuck, dude? you should uh you should look it up adam just is there yeah there's B- a tweet or something BAPS Temple, New Jersey. Just Google image it. It's like it's outrageous. It's, it's the kind of thing you expect to see in other countries from like a thousand years ago or something. And they built it in the last like Whoa. ten years. It's uh, like the most well built were... thing in New Jersey currently. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's insane. Yeah. yeah. So it's like a whole and city. It, it's like a whole it complex kind of, feels that way. kind of thing. Yeah. And they have like they have like restaurants, stores. Yeah, it looks like, like multiple buildings. Community center kind of thing. Movie theaters. Built by volunteers? 12,000 volunteers? No, 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 no. Okay, so there was a little <laughs> bit of a scandal. A little... <laughs> there was a little oh. bit of a scandal with it where uh, they were charged with, like, straight-up slavery or something insane oh, like that. No. Because they brought over a bunch of people from India to work on it, and the people were claiming that they were, like, physically trapped in the facility, like, in the place where they were building it, and they were being paid, like, $1 a day or something insane. There were Ooh, allegations I... of exploitation. Yeah. Ooh. I think it ended up I don't know. It got like smoothed over where like it wasn't really that, but I don't know. Who knows what's going on? But uh, huh. yeah, man, if you're going to build something that crazy, it's not surprising. That some is, fucked it's up amazing. Going on. Yeah, we're going to have to put pictures on the show notes or something. Have this you guys ever used insane. chat GPT voice? I use it all Jack the time. Has a I got a shortcut button for it. On literally the shortcut on my iPhone it goes right to it. Yeah. So like as I'm leaving there, I'm like, wow, that was really something. Right. And like I have like a 40 minute drive to my house. Right. So I like popped open chat GPT voice and I'm like, hey. I'm like what's what's like that whole particular sect all about like what's 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 the story here you know i want to yeah. know more and it was so cool how like it like gave me like 20 minutes of material yeah. and it's funny because it like stops and it's like um well <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, it's not like a robot voice yeah necessarily like it'll do like those like transition noises in speech which is uh, it, it makes it oddly fluid yeah i hadn't considered no, like using it for wikipedia style like just like a podcast because mm-hmm. chat gpt yeah. is super verbose and that's the thing that drives me nuts using it for like work stuff but if it's like i'm in the car and i just want to listen to something and having it like read me about something i want to know about that's that's an interesting use case i like it how the fuck do green yeah. mills work and you just like, <laughs> <podcast. laughs> i do the exact same thing if I'm alone, <laughs> if I'm alone in the car, I just like pick some random thing that I want to like. I've always had a question about, or I don't know how to do, and I just talk back and forth to it. And it sounds so realistic, like this is like trailer from the future. I was doing, because uh, I just moved, I have to go patch up all the holes I made in the other house. So I was like just having a conversation about learning how to do that. And I feel like I can, I can straight up go do it now. I asked every question that I possibly had. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's great. Yeah, it's spackle time, homeboy. <laughs> yeah, so cool. yeah, I got the whole bucket. You gotta go so like, many techniques, and everything. Though. There's so many different options, huh? You said you gotta go like mesh and everything. I don't think I made any holes that big, but I gotta see. The mesh is cool. That's like a cool technique. Like, who came up with all this shit? There's like eight different ways you can patch a hole. It's wild. So when we were, um, you know, I don't know, twenty year old degenerates, uh, we rented <laughs> this house, and um, oh man, we used to like skateboard in the living room, like go from the kitchen. <laughs> ollie up onto a table and that kind of thing and then uh, you know constantly like punching and things like that so like there were like huge holes in the wall all the time and we figured out that you could actually uh use spackle and fix it with an empty 30 pack cardboard <laughs> <laughs> yeah. would you would you just put it on the inside of the wall and then like spackle over it you put it on the outside of the wall and then on the outside and then just sand it a little <laughs> It wasn't some fucking immaculate wall to begin with. In the first okay. Place. <laughs> you, know, you could see like the taping and everything like that, but it provided the structure required <laughs> for this for the spack of the tape. Oh. Sand it a little. Do a little color match on the paint. <laughs> we lost stacks again. Speaking of the car, there's a really funny thing that happened this morning. So it was, it was like pouring rain, and uh, that, that means I have to drive my kids to school, which is close. They just can't yeah. walk because it's raining. Um, so I was like, "Are you guys ready for school?" I like, threw them in my car, and I'm like driving, and I'm like, "I'm, like, I'm going to pull you guys up in style." And I put on "Bye Bye Bye" by NSYNC, <laughs> and like these kids like unbuckled uh, their seatbelts, like walked up, like hitting me, like turn it off. 
<laughs> no, no, like reach like they were like like that was like the worst thing that could possibly happen to them is that they could like pull up for a drop off with NSYNC playing. Are they aware of that music? Like, had they ever heard it, or is it? They've heard it before, but they have no respect for it. No respect. It's not like clothes that come back in style. Like, music just kind of passes. The second I dropped them off, pff, volume maxed that shit and rode home. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are you talking about? I dropped off for a second. Uh, when I dropped my kids off this morning, I told them I was going to yeah. pull up in style, so I played NSYNC Bye Bye Bye, and they like flipped the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> like 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 bad like trying to get me to turn it off like they didn't want to get oh like, really yeah, yeah they're sucks. like embarrassed and i'm like i'm like wow i'm like how like how can you be so irrationally angry over <laughs> the arguably best boy band of all time arguably <laughs> <laughs> well i, I say Dude, that what? because you know there are backstreet boy camps out there who you know are just what, itching what? to disagree <laughs> passionately <laughs> I was a Backstreet Boys guy when I was growing up. Really? I didn't like NSYNC as much. I knew, but I could tell that like I was wrong. I could tell that everybody else was, <laughs> I was in like the minority side. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of I, Backstreet Boys, what, when is that Kanye song going to get released? Is it one of those things that's never going to come out? I think it's on this, the, it's, it's scheduled for the, the next one, but like. Are they doing two? I it, think it's. It I mean, like I, I don't know. With him, right? It's like. <laughs> <laughs> apparently there was going to be like three albums and it was going to be like the eighth of each month or some shit like for three months straight yeah so it's like a three part it's, it's like verse, verse, vultures one versus two you know, like, you know, t -t -t -t. but um i was fucking shocked that it wasn't on regular vultures i was like me too serious? like bad me too That's what like, do you think of that album now i need i don't i don't really like it i mean it's okay but it's not like life of pablo caliber yeah i didn't like it initially but i just kept playing it on loop and now I'm, I'm super into it i just like listen to it a bunch of times um i like it i'm just not super yeah. into it it's hard to accept that maybe the peak has happened i think everybody's gonna fix that and <laughs> that's, that's, gonna be, that's gonna be such a summer banger when that that's drops true. yeah can you imagine being like fucked up in a hot tub <laughs> it's like oh you sexual yeah, I'm like, oh man, <laughs> <laughs> fucking slam two white claws together. <laughs> My wife's like, it's 9 a.m. <laughs> Do your kids uh, even listen to music? Are they into that yet? Yeah, 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 yeah. They listen. They listen to a lot of different music. You know what they listen to? They listen to like the backer music for their TikTok. So like, whatever, oh, yeah. whatever is on their TikToks, they're into. Yeah. They go and find the song, and that's like their. That's how they find yeah, music. Yeah, like, uh, it, it's it's all the the soundtracks, all their shit, right? So like the one is like really into like the Stranger Things soundtrack, which mm -hmm. is hilarious. It's like a hilarious way to like sideload classic rock. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then like the other one is like really into Barbie, so like that whole, I don't know what you would call that music. Was that a like wait, the, the Barbie soundtrack? Yeah, there's a Barbie the soundtrack. So I, I have a. Uh, I have a record player in my living room. You know, like one of those ones that has like the speaker built into it. Mm -hmm. Oh. So it doesn't really bump, right? It just kind of like plays <laughs> it at like a very casual level. Um, so like when, they, when they're when they into music, what I'll do is I'll get, we'll get the records. So we have like a, a variety of records of, you know, absolutely classic stuff. And um, then we have like some, some more recent things, right? That shouldn't even be on records, but they are. Like Stranger <laughs> Things soundtrack. <laughs> Or the Barbie uh, soundtrack. One they funny put thing. That stuff on vinyl. That's awesome. So me and my wife went to a Snoop Dogg concert, and it was fucking awesome. Um, yeah. But like, there we ended. We said, "Oh, we gotta get something for the kids, right?" So we went and got like this some like Snoop Dogg merch, right? So it was like this like Snoop hoodie, and like some some other shit, right? And then my my oldest daughter got like into Snoop. Oh. So now mm. she has the doggy style vinyl. She thinks Snoop is hilarious. We had Snoop on the <laughs> stoop. She has like a she has like a Snoop poster in her room. <laughs> but it started with the merch. That's how you gotta like. It started with the merch. Incept it, yeah. You, know, you can't just show them music, right? You need to show them like why it's cool, and then they're like, "Fuck it, I'm doing music. I'll take it." <laughs> <laughs> oh, good advice.
Okay, I have a clarifying question. Uh, mm-hmm. Is Snoop on the on the stoop? Is that like Elf on the Shelf? Mm-hmm. Is that kind of a thing? Mm-hmm. Like you put him, you just like set him on the mantle or something. What do you do with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same kind of thing. Yep. And you see, like watching over them, and like, is there some story you tell them? No, they're the yeah. kids older. Yeah, yeah. So I say that Snoop on the stoop watches them, and uh, if they're bad or bad enough that he's gonna, he's going to call some some lokes to pull up and. <laughs> 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 Actually, Sn- Snoop does. Snoop kind of just chills for the most part. He's not like I don't, you know, out of respect for Snoop, go and put him in all these elf situations. <laughs> the other yeah. elves, right? It's like it's like, oh, look at look, he fucking, you know, is tied to a candy cane on a ceiling fan. <laughs> We're gonna do that with Snoop. <laughs> oh, out of respect, Snoop, I feel like Snoop's everywhere because he did that thing with Martha Stewart. Yeah, uh, I remember there was a Jeep. This is a w- long time ago before all this AI voice stuff came out. But he did a a voice for your GPS. That's and awesome. he would say shit like, "Go round and round the roundabout, round and round the roundabout." <laughs> and <I was> just, <laughs> but yeah, he like he like just does everything. He like merchandises the fuck out of himself. I always wanted that. I wanted like Fifty Cent. And he, you know, like, did you ever play yeah. the Fifty Cent video games? Yeah, dude, those are like, crazy. In the sand. <laughs> yeah. But like, it was like the funniest yeah. shit that he would say. Yeah, you'd be like, "Hey, man, watch the fuck out!" Right? And you'd be like, <laughs> "Like, you usually don't get that in video games, right?" But like, that would be yeah. so funny for GPS. Yeah, oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. I mean, now with AI, like, we could probably have whatever we want. <laughs> Those video games were insane. Yeah. Like the entire premise, like he did a show in in like some unspecified Middle Eastern country where they shorted him. <laughs> <laughs> now he's gonna commit murder over it and there's a, a bit like somebody he tries to pay him with like a bejeweled skull which is then taken away by like a third party who like he's got to go get the skull from but like they they run the area and then yeah it's just it's like like trash cans on fire and he's doing like front flips like shooting dudes with like like taliban outfits you're like what the fuck is going on here <laughs> this is insane 50 cent blood in the sand oh, i was like oh man but this yeah, yeah. Like, Dude, I, I swear it was like i can't tell if it's nostalgia but i feel like stuff was just more fun back then like you, you just get yeah. like all this like really weird wild shit and i feel like you don't get that as much anymore everything that's, that's insane i don't know I feel like they're they're, they're a little bit calculated? more decisive about what they put out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like that that would never have gotten past all the layers. Yeah, that not today. exist today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, speaking of Fifty Cent, uh, I was probably late to rap music, but I still remember "In the Club" was the first like rap song I ever heard, and I was like holy shit like what is this like, i had never heard anything that was like, like your, that in my life your first exposure to yeah. rap i think so from like my it's, i like have a memory of oh, being okay, like yeah, yeah. What, this is crazy. Like 32 right yeah okay so in the club i think maybe i was like nine or something something like that wow yeah i was in like, high school i didn't even know what the hell he was saying i was like <laughs> he, the, i think the lyric is like sip bacardi in the club i thought that was all one word i thought he was just saying some like <laughs> I like gave it some kind of uh, meaning, but it's funny when you go back and like the the lyric is something completely different. You just heard it wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And as a kid, like I, even if I knew the lyrics, like I didn't know what the fuck "sip Bacardi in the club" meant. So, <laughs> I mean, Ken might have at that age, but I I, I didn't. <laughs> we were we would drink uh, you know one fifty one like constantly. Oh yeah. <laughs> at nine, I wasn't nine. I was like sixteen, seventeen at the time. Oh okay. Yeah. So like, we're, I'm like, I'm like in the middle of high school, right? Like, oh, you're put, saying when that song? I got yeah, you. like when that song yeah, was yeah. like popping off. Uh oh. What's up? Gotta go. None. Yeah, I might have to cut this short. Yeah, that's all right. I uh, didn't get to talk about monads. I was really hoping to hear something out of your mouth that was smart like that again. That was that was fun. Can we stop and continue? <laughs> We can do whatever we want. We we could stop, cut, and then continue in a minute. Yeah. Wait for him to come back. I just got to go respond to something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no worries.
This is going to make a great YouTube video for sure. Should probably edit him. What? Hello? Ken left. He was like, if Dax is going to keep dropping off, I'm out of here. This, this is stupid. Can't take you guys seriously. And then he left. I'm just kidding. Is that actually what happened? <laughs> no, no, no. He needed to step away for a minute. He said, uh, oh. if I need to step away to respond to something, can we cut this part out? And I said, yes. Mm. Uh, and then I was just talking to YouTube for a little bit because that's that's not going to get cut out. So it's just going to be me. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, man, my internet's so annoying. I'm doing this funny thing where like, uh, I was connected to my, when we started, I was connected to my phone. And yeah. I got fucked up somehow. I don't know how. Then I switched to my normal internet and that worked for a while. And then that cut out. So now I'm back to my phone. I'm just, I'm just swapping back and forth. Yeah. Those damn uh, Houthi rebels in uh, the Middle East. Or Is that what it the was? The Red Sea. It was I mean, like intentionally I, damaged? Yeah, I think so. I don't know if that's oh, literally what's causing my problems. But yeah, well, no, it was like a rebel attack. Huh. So they like have to go to the bottom of the ocean and then like. I don't it. really get how they did it. They do they have like a submarine. Yeah. No, how do how do we keep those cables safe? Like, there's some pretty important stuff that happens over those cables. I guess they're just hard to reach. Is that what it is? That Security through obscurity. It. Huh. I guess. But yeah, I mean, if another competent country. Hey, can I ask you a, a technical question now that we're talking about security? Dax, come back, Dax. <sighs> okay, fine. I'll ask YouTube. So, YouTube, if you were uh, trying to prevent people from maliciously hitting your auth endpoints to make you send out lots of email and ruin your email reputation, what service would you use? This is stupid. You can't answer me. YouTube comments. Are you back? I, uh, it's. F Yes, but you said something about email reputation. I heard it just like when I reconnected it, like played yeah. everything you said at like five Yeah, I, I decided I'd ask YouTube instead of you since YouTube's the only person reliable right now. <laughs> you guys are all just flaking out. Uh, so if, if you had an endpoint, an auth endpoint that sends out an email, oh, I've seen this in the console. You use some service. So we've bot got poison. this malicious. Yeah, bot poison. Okay. Uh, we've got this malicious actor like causing us to send tons of email by hitting our auth endpoints because we didn't have anything in front of it. I know WAF has something for like specifically that, like auth type. It uses like ML and it tries to detect abuse. Uh, yeah. But is that bot poison thing good? Well, we should probably we should probably turn on WAF as well. Uh, but. The bot poison thing, the reason I got it was one of the options is to like make a captcha effectively, but mm, mm -hmm. I didn't want to like, I don't want anyone to ever have, actually have to fill out a captcha. That's freaking annoying. Yeah. Weft the bot poison too. Oh, it does? You can, yeah. Oh, interesting. It's kind of like Cloudflare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the bot poison thing, all it does is uh, it makes you have to compute a hash, like, like kind of like a Bitcoin. Oh, really? Thing. So it just increases the cost of doing an attack to the yeah. point where it's not so worth like, it. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Uh, do you pay like per request? Uh, like how many, how does it work? Yeah. I could, I, I the pricing was a like crazy cheap, but again, we're not a consumer site, so I don't know. You, you might want yeah, to yeah, look, yeah. but yeah, I don't know what our actual request volume should be. I just know what it is right now. And it's yeah. You high. should just try turning on WAF and see if it like automatically blocks yeah, it. Just fixes it. Hmm. I have to pee now. Uh, I'm going to go pee. Go quick, yeah. This is like a crazy episode. When you think about it, it's been every combination of us on here at one time. <laughs> okay, I'll be back. Thank God for local recording. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for Chris for making this episode tolerable on audio platforms. Okay, be right back. All right, see you.
I'm back. Hello. Wait, are you are you there? Okay. Yeah. I've had my my window open all day. It's so nice out. This is amazing. I don't like that because then that takes away that takes away my enjoyment of my weather. <laughs> if other people in the world can enjoy their weather, then Miami feels a little less shiny. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, I'm like kind of worried that my shit isn't going to be uploaded. Oh, really? I mean, I don't like know. I've like, have like reconnected I so much that like several times. Yeah. Uh, I actually need to go here pretty soon. I've got a personal trainer workout. Uh, when, when do you have to go? Uh, in 10 minutes? In, yeah. Okay. I guess we'll just hang around for another five and see if he comes back. Yeah. I, uh, I was like poking through my like index DB and I see a bunch of things. So I think something got saved. What are you talking about? Index I was, like, DB? Looking, I was looking at like what Riverside is saving locally. Oh, wow. Look at you like prying into... Just make sure I hit the delete button. But, oh, jeez. Because, <laughs> uh, like, my uploading percentage is 0%, and it keeps trying to, like, talk to the server, and it can't. That's not good. Does it yeah. say 0% on my end? Can you see, like, the status of everyone's uploads? I don't know. I feel like maybe. What is that URL you go to to see, like, missing? Is it just riverside.m slash upload? I think so. Yeah, I think it's just slash upload, maybe. Or maybe it's the studio name slash upload. I don't okay. know. I, I don't think the issue is my internet, because now I'm on... Wait, am I tethered? What am I on? Yeah, I'm tethered, and I'm still having the same problem where some websites aren't working. Like, I can't go to Riverside right now. Hmm. I guess this is just working because it's peer to peer. Interesting. So this may or may not be a podcast episode. We will see. That would suck if it didn't work. That would suck. Having issues. I guess we could talk. <laughs> this whole episode. Where, <laughs> I guess we could talk. When Ken hasn't been on here, it's just been like dinking around. Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, we could do when we have guests. We could just like they could just pop in when they pop in, and then pop out when they pop out, and we could just sandwich it with us talking. Yeah, that's 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 fine. Uh, what were what were we talking about before he hopped off? Uh, before you fell off and then he hopped or off. I don't. Remember. I fell off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the number of hop offs at this point. I don't remember anything. I really wanted to get him to talk about like crazy React internals and monads and stuff. What was it? He was on something <laughs> where he like had this big spiel and it was awesome. I just want to hear yeah, him go the whiskey, off again. whiskey and web thing. Yeah. Yeah. It was like. All kinds of smart words. I, I, I that video understand. went really viral. <laughs> <laughs> Monads and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so good. Oh man. <laughs> All right, I gotta go get my pump. Okay. That's what we. Well, that's then... what we call a workout in the biz. Yeah. Get pump on. <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> now I kind of hope this isn't an episode. <laughs> I feel like. Uh, it's like once it gets in my head, I'm going to start saying dumber and dumber things. I'm just going to not say anything and let you talk. Okay. Yeah, you are. That's what you do. Is that coconut water? Har harvest? Harmless harvest? Yeah. Yeah. I special love those. treat. I drink I those so as good. well. 
is it it's dumb when i drink it because i can just get real coconut like <laughs> go crack open a coconut and drink it like a just off like of a, a tree stranded on a desert island survivor yeah they're everywhere we have so many coconuts that people literally throw coconuts out it's it's, it's like a <laughs> it's what's it called it's like an, a nuisance yeah it's a nuisance because people oh, have man. coconut trees in their backyard they didn't necessarily plant like they're just there from forever ago yeah and they'll just randomly have like a hundred coconuts in their backyard. Oh my word. And they just won't know what to do with it. So we buy, we spend money on coconuts. I know. They're so I good. Know. Like the meat out of a coconut. Mm, yum. I love the meat when it's soft, like on a young coconut. Yeah. That's, that's what uh-huh. I like the most. Remember so when I was good. buying coconuts every week? That's what I was oh, doing. Oh yeah. For. And you were hauling them back in the, yeah. <laughs> Your little wagon or whatever. Yeah. I'm going to start doing that again. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Get a stroller, I, I have one coconut every off. day for breakfast. Oh, they're Great. so good. They are a lot of work. I mean, I guess you get you probably have the coconut jack with the big hammer and you smack no, it. No, I just got a machete. Oh, right. You don't have a yeah. coconut jack? Oh, my word. Well, you I kept looking up. Day? I kept looking up tools for opening coconuts and like they all seemed kind of lame compared to a machete. Like, I don't know how well I they mean, work. a machete is kind of cool, but the <laughs> the tool we have is like it's like a round blade sharp thing that you set on the top of the handle and then it's like a big rubber mallet you hit on the top and it just cuts a perfect circle out of the top. No, but, no, but just... I'm, yeah, I mean, I, I can't, I just use a drill for that. I just drill a hole in it with like a drill bit. <laughs> drill. I have like a dedicated coconut drill. And that drill is bit. hilarious. Okay. And I just, you have to drill two holes because otherwise like the, the air doesn't flow through. Oh, but and then you, you drill two it. holes and you, and you stick the straw and then have to split it open to and split it open. And then cut it in half to eat the meat. Is that? Yeah. So I literally yeah. take my machete. I put the coconut on the ground, take my machete. And I swing it as hard as I can, and it goes usually <laughs> halfway into the, in, in through it. Through it, sometimes I get lucky yeah. and it cracks fully. And then the coconut is stuck on the machete, right? So then I lift the machete up with the coconut on it, and then I slam it back down on the ground, <laughs> and that usually <laughs> cracks it open. Oh, and, please uh, take a video. I need a video yeah, of this. And, and, and I'm usually doing when I was doing this, I was doing this at like eight in the morning with no shirt on, just like hunched over, like <laughs> in like my front yard. Uh, oh, that's fun. Yeah. Uh, but now hey, I have a I backyard, so all this. Miami. Yeah, can, I'm definitely gonna have a, a bunch of coconuts for sure, okay, and cool. I have a bunch of coconuts for sure. Love it. Uh, yeah, now I, all this weird stuff I used to do in my front yard. Now I have like now I'm going to be doing my backyard in private, like a normal person. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, I gotta go. All right, it's been we'll fun. wrap it up. All right, it's been, yeah, it's been real. Hopefully everything uploads. See you, Ken. <laughs> Hope Ken's okay. Yeah. yeah hopefully everything uploads. See ya. Wait, I'm going to hit the button.